Good afternoon, friends. Steve Benoon here with the Noon Institute of Biblical Research and Israeli News Live. Um, anyway, listen, just the other day for Passover, we did a message called The Real Passover Lamb. And I kind of took that message along with uh, some other interesting insights that the Lord has revealed to me just recently, in fact, uh, and shared those with uh, uh, at the, actually I had to join in by Zoom there with the conference there that uh, Dr. Knight did there in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee, or just outside of Chattanooga where, they, where, they, where those guys live there. And uh, I was sharing a resurrection message about the Lord Jesus Christ and I got into this message right here, the real Passover lamb, as well as uh, the information uh, I wanted to share with you now. So listen, let me just, let's just go right into it. I don't want to waste much time, but take what I'm going to share with you now and take this message here. And I've got to actually do this message even deeper because blasphemy is something I really hit on and I hit on it today at uh, Dr. Knight's broadcast there. Uh, I don't know if I went into it on this message or not as deep, but listen, Hebrews really lays it in there what the blasphemy is. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Uh, what is it when it says in Hebrews, there remains no more sacrifice for sin. Now we did talk about this on this message. Uh, but I'm going to talk to you about the crown of thorns that Jesus was placed on his head. Now, I've done this before. I have talked about the crown of thorns before in light of the fact of a type where when God met Moses at the burning bush, uh, he was at the eighth Sinai, which is a thorn bush. And that thorn bush was on fire. And from the midst of the thorn bush, God himself was speaking to Moses uh, given him uh, the direction to go and deliver the children of Israel from the land of Egypt, right? And I said, what was it? Christ was in the midst of the thorn bush uh, when they put that crown of thorns on his head, speaking in an unknown language uh, as he prayed and said, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? All right, but there's so many more beautiful analogies, and I wanted to share another one with you that the Lord showed me. And I have to say this for the sake of my Jewish friends around the world that do not know Jesus Christ. If you don't know him, if you've never, if you've questioned whether or not he is truly the Messiah, if he was truly the one that we should have looked for, or not. Well, I'm about to share something with you regarding the crown of thorns that was placed on his head that your forefathers did that clearly, clearly was a prophecy being fulfilled that was given to you by Joshua, by Moses, and yet we should have recognized Jesus to be the Messiah by nothing else than the fact that we put a crown of thorn upon his head. That should have settled it right there. So I'm really looking forward, by the way, too, to iConnect FX, getting the beta test running on our channel here over here at iConnectFX.com, Israeli News Live, because it's going to be available in Hebrew, Russian, Spanish, and a few other language. When I speak these things, you're going to be able to hear it in your language. And this message Israel needs to hear. All right. So let's get into it. Right. Here's what he says here. And when they had planted a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Right. Let me show you the Hebrew Matthew on this real quick before we get into the prophecy of it. And I'll just start a little further up. Verse 24. Pilate, when he saw that he had no power of resistance and was unable to make any peace with them. Talking about the Pharisees and how they had coerced all the people to hand Jesus over to be crucified, right? Before a great dispute among the people might arise because of this, took water, washed his hands before the people and said, I am innocent of the blood. Be careful what you do. All the people answered and said, his blood be upon us and upon our seed. Then he released Barabbas to them and delivered to them Jesus for beating and affliction that they might hang him. By the way, let me just mention one thing about Barabbas. 
I know that Jonathan Kahn went around doing a message about this, saying that Barabbas is means son of the father. And it is. It's Aramaic. Instead of saying uh, Ben Abba in Hebrew, which would be son, son of the father, they say Bar Abba or Bar Abbas, which is son of the father in Aramaic. And so Jonathan Kahn was trying to make, kind of taking up with the Jewish people saying, well, they were just calling for the son of the father. And what was wrong with that? No, see, here's where the, here's where you get it mixed up. And maybe if you know Jonathan Kahn, you might be able to share this with him and just share it with him in love. I don't mean it in any disrespect or, or being cruel or anything, but there were two sons there that day. There was the son of almighty God, Jesus Christ, and there was the son of the devil. And Barabbas was the son of Satan. He was represented there and Jesus Christ was represented there, the son of almighty God. And Israel had to make a choice in who they wanted, especially as being prisoners, to be released unto them. And they chose the son of the devil. No wonder why Jesus said about them, you vipers, you serpents, see, snakes in the grass, in other words. I'll show you that right here in the Hebrew. In the Hebrew, so it's a little bit more blunt in the Hebrew, Matthew, than what we have um, over in the, uh, it's in Matthew 23, so just give me a second here, I'll see if I can back up and find it for you real quick, uh, than what you have in the King James Version. Woe to you, sages and Pharisees, hypocrites, who are uh, a little further down than now. Here we go, right here. Um, yeah, verse 33. Serpents, seed of vipers, how will you escape the judgment of Gehenna if you do not turn in repentance? He calls them serpent and seed of vipers. There's another version of the Hebrew Matthew that says that they were the genealogy of serpents or vipers, one or the other. I'll show that to you. Let me, let me, I mean, this is some crazy stuff. You, you think I'm kidding you, but I'm telling you, this is the truth, the gospel truth. This is some very, very, what, which version is that? Let's see, we got it right down here somewhere. Okay, the Sephirad. The Sephirad uh, is, uh, was found, I think, in the 15th century. The Jewish people had this in their collection. It was in the Hebrew language. This is just an English version of that. And let me take you to chapter 23 here real quick. And we will look at verse 33. And uh, one page the other direction. And where do we have? Here we go right here. Serpents. Right there. There you go. Can you see it? Can't highlight it. Serpents. Genealogy of snakes. How will you be delivered of the judgment of uh, Gehemon? genealogy of snakes. Well, it's going to make a little bit more sense as we get into that. The reason I read this to you is because I wanted you to see something because we're going to look now for my Jewish friends that are listening. Listen, God prophesied to you, not just by Joshua, but by Moses. Actually, Joshua is really quoting here the same words that Moses had already quoted in the book of Numbers. All right, now we are in chapter 23, I believe it is, of Joshua. Let me just take it back up. Yeah, Joshua chapter 23, right? Let's start verse 9. Wherefore the Lord hath driven out from before you great nations and mighty, but as you, no man hath stood against you unto this day. One man of you hath chased a thousand for the Lord your God. He, is a, he, uh, he it is that fought for you as he spoke unto you. Take good heed, therefore, unto yourselves that you love the Lord your God. Else, if you do not in any wise go back and cleave unto the remnant of these nations, even these that remain among you and make marriages with them and go in unto them and they to you. Watch this carefully now, friends. He's telling them, be careful. You're going to go back. And you're going to cleave to that remnant. Who, what nations is he talking about? Hittite, Perizzite, Jebusite, Ammonite. Remember those ones that were there? I'll prove it to you in a moment. Know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive these nations from out of your sight, but they shall be a snare and a trap unto you and a scourge in your sides and pricks in your eyes until you perish from off this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. Behold, this day I 
I am going the way of the earth. Consider you therefore all that all in your heart and all in your soul, that not one thing hath failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spoke concerning you. All are come to pass unto you. Not one thing hath failed thereof. And it shall come to pass that as all the good things are come upon you, of which the Lord your God spoke unto you, so shall the Lord bring upon you all the evil things until he have destroyed you from off this good land which the Lord God, your God hath given you. Now I say this, friends, why? Because now they translated in memory here, pricks in your eyes, all right? If you were to look at that in the uh, King James Version there, they translate the word thorns in your eyes until you perish from off this good land which the Lord your God hath given you, all right? It's from Sanim, right there. Veretanim Benaychem. There'll be thorns in your eyes. All right. And granted, it's plural, but the thing is, it's prophetic. And this is exactly what they did to Jesus. And of course, what happened after they did this to Jesus, Israel perished from off the land. So you're given a prophecy. Not only did, did Joshua say this, Moses also prophesied the same thing in the book of Numbers. See? But if you will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then shall those that you let remain of them be as thorns in your eyes and as pricks in your side, sides, and they shall harass you in the land wherein you dwell. In other words, always a problem. So there's a compound fulfillment in that. But Joshua says, Joshua goes further than what Moses did when Joshua said in verse 12, else if you do in any wise go back and cleave into the remnant of these nations, even these that remain among you and make what? Marriages with them and go into them and they to you. That's what's going to cause the pricks or the thorns in your eyes. What causes it? It's the children of those marriages. Who are those marriages with? It's between Israel, or specifically in this case here, between the house of Judah and that of those nations that were there in the land back during the time that this prophecy went forth. What nations were there? Go to Numbers chapter 13. We find out the Nephilim were there. There we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, who come of the... Now, Anak comes not from Nephilim. They didn't, they didn't do that right. All right? Right here, look here. All right? When it talks about the sons of Anak, they're Nephilim. Here you go, right there. Not fair yod, there's that yod, see it in the blue there? Lamed yod mim. But Anak, not Enoch, Anak, he's from, there's no yod in between there. There's no yod between the fe and the lamed right there. He's from the Nephilim. He's from the fallen ones, the fallen angels. That's where he's from. You notice that? Spelled completely different. But what? But I said, I said, I told you though, from those nations, what nations were they? Well, let's back up. Verse twenty-eight. How be it, the people that dwell in the land are fierce. This one, this one, Joshua and Caleb, and the you know the ten spies go out there, spied out before they're going to take the land. And this one, God's telling them, wipe them all out, right? Fortified their cities are fortified, very great. More, but we saw the children of Anak there, Nephilim. Amalek dwelleth in the land of the south. The Hittite, the Jebusite, the Amorite dwelleth in the mountains. And the Canaanite dwell by the sea along by the side of the Jordan. Okay, Steve, well, what does that got to do with anything? Go to Ezra, chapter 9. And when these were done and the princes drew near unto me, saying, The people of Israel and the priests of the Levites have not separated themselves from the peoples of the lands. This, ain't, this is not Babylonians, friends, doing according to their abominations, even to the Canaanites, Hittites, Perizzites, Jebusites, Ammonites, Moabites, Gypsies, and Amorites. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves, 
for their sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the peoples of the lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and the rulers has been first in this faithlessness. What do you know? And Joshua and Moses both prophesied, saying, If you make the marriages with them, they will cause the thorns to be in your eyes. What do you know? And when they put that crown of thorn on Jesus' head and shoved it down to his eyes, what do you think it was? That was the ultimate. There had already been thorns in the sides of Israel because of these Pharisees that as Jesus clearly said, they were of the serpent race, right? He already told us that. We already know that, right? We already have it. There you go. Verse 33, serpents, seed of vipers. How will you escape the judgment of Gehenna? All right, you already got it. Plain as day, right? Well, they, and they, and they're, they're the ones that planted the crown of thorns on his head. Well, that's what, it's, that's what Joshua said they would do. He said, you'll make marriages. And when you make those marriages, what are they going to do? They're going to become thorns in your side. Or excuse me, thorns in your eyes. Till you perish off this good land. So here it was. God gave you a prophecy through Moses of what was going to happen, he said, and Joshua said, all the good God said happened to you. He said, so is the evil going to happen to you as well. And so that evil is going to happen is that he knew you were going to marry in among the remnant of those nations. The Hittite, Perzite, Jebusite, right? Just like it says in Numbers uh, chapter 13 over here. Jebusite, Amorite, Canaanite, all those, all those Nephilim races. So you mingled the holy seed as Ezra clearly stated there. You mingled the holy seed with those same people. Oh, they put them away. They said, oh, but they divorced them. See, they put them back, sent them back and everything. Well, guess what? They may have sent them back all right, but when Darius and Artaxerxes and, and Cyrus and all these guys there uh, up in the land of Babylon sent them back to their homeland, he sent back also the Perizzite, Jebusite, Moabite, Amorites, and all them. So the kids went back anyway. And isn't it interesting that the that the priest, the true Zedekite priesthood, was overthrown in Israel before Jesus got there? Overthrown by a bunch of men that, that were not even priests. And who were they? The Maccabees. What do you know? Men that had no business taking the office of a priesthood, but they overthrew it anyway. Even set up their own high priest. Yeah. And it says about Judas Maccabee and one writing about him that he, when he put on his armor, he looked like a giant. Well, what do you know? Sounds like a Nephilim offspring to me. Interesting, isn't it? Everything that was prophesied came to pass. And Jesus was the final one that they crowned with the thorns and they shoved it down on his head, no doubt right into his eyes. I believe the prophecy was fulfilled with Christ himself. I just wanted to share that with you. And I trust it's a blessing to you. Thank you for listening. Don't forget, you can visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can watch all of our videos there on IsraeliNewsLive.org. Uh, that we that we have that come out, even those ones that are a little bit controversial, like the news one we did today, Biden pushes the U.S. closer to war with Russia. Thanks to uh, iConnectFX.com, we're able to put those on there. And uh, But if you feel on your heart led to, to support the ministry, please do so. Our mailing address is right there on the front of the screen, as well as you can donate right there online just by clicking there online. God bless you. Thank you for watching. I'm Stephen Benoon, and God bless you.